All right, so it's been absolutely ages since I've uploaded a video on my YouTube channel and I figured that when I had to come back that there would have to be some sort of bang, some sort of video that was a coming back video and what better than blowing up everyone's favorite type of subwoofers. We have today three 12 inch car subwoofers. We have a Cadence here on the left, a Sony Explode in the middle and a JVC on the right. Now I just want to say a massive shout out to Riley for supplying me with this Sony Explode subwoofer for today's video. Of course, we'll know that I had these two back here, but uh, I wasn't sure if those two by themselves would be enough to make a video, but definitely with the three here, we are going to have quite an awesome video here today. I will have to make some updated videos in the future. A lot of things changed, obviously, since my last video. It's been three or four months now. So, without further ado, we have the trusty Serwin Vega hooked up with the Behringer EQ. We're going to do it as we always do, hooking that up. Bridged 4 ohm load should be able to push 2800 watt RMS into these subwoofers and we're going to see them go up in smoke in today's video. So if you're interested in that, of course, stick around, chuck a like on the video in anticipation for some smoke and possibly fire. With that being said though, let's get on with the show. All right, so we're going to start off with the Cadence subwoofer and we're going to be leaving it in its box. Um, that way it's not going to bottom out like crazy. It'll actually make some bass and it'll blow up. We're going to be playing Bees Knees by Juice World as sort of a tribute song. And uh, yeah, I can imagine actually this box here is going to end up in my room. Uh, with one of the Dayton subwoofers and that's another story but basically I don't have the Volkswagen anymore so I don't have the Dayton subs in the Volkswagen I've instead got the Ultimax 10 out of my room in my Audi so long story short we're gonna blow this up hopefully it doesn't get copyright I think the sub will be distorting so much that that won't be possible let's get ahead because people will tell me I talk too much Okay, I believe that that is probably not actually distorting enough. I might have to go with a non-copyright sound song uh, to blow this subwoofer up. All I can tell you is just from that little blast, I can indeed smell the voice coil, but it's definitely still clear the song there um, that I will get. Oh, wow, that stinks. <laughs> We're going to get a lot of smoke out of these subs. I am really keen. Let's get a non-copyright sound song and uh, we'll continue on with this video. Okay, so here is the song that we're going to be playing through the subwoofer. It seems to be the first song I come across, which also actually has a very decent bass line. So let's play that song now through the sub. This song also seems to have a lot of high notes, but is also followed by some pretty deadly sounding low notes. Let's crank the sub up. thing is absolutely bottoming out right now. I don't think I've seen this thing move that far. Here we go with the drop. This should put an end to it. That might be the protection from the Serwin Vega. I think the CV2800 has gone into protect. So, as far as I'm aware, I've never had that happen before, but the coil doesn't, oh, it, it sounds damaged, but it doesn't sound blown. So we're gonna turn the CV2800 off, turn it back on again. Oh, there we go. That is, uh, that is the end, I believe, of the subwoofer. Uh, of course, we'll tear these down at the end of the video and I apologize for sounding a bit rusty. It has been a very long time since I've talked in front of a camera. Let's see if the cone is locked into place at all um, and if we can get any smoke to come out of the port. Oh, 100%. That is, I can't push that in any further. Let's just make sure it's definitely blown up. Let's crank the CV2800 up again. It's, uh, it's definitely blown. So, bit uneventful almost, but we can move the coil out, but it just bottoms out when you push it in. That's, that's as far in as it'll comfortably go. Now, I was always curious what was under this dust cap. There you go. Just another little dust cap. Underneath that dust cap, 
I would imagine, is the voice coil. So let's take a quick look at that actually. Just use some needle nose pliers, straight in. Oh, so hot. The smell of voice coil, that is the room. Yes, you can see the smoke coming out. Come to think of it, it was probably a very dumb idea to have blown the subwoofer in the box that I plan on using in my room, especially considering this is full of insulating sound deadener, which is now going to stink of smoke. Good idea. Very smart. I now regret my decisions. We're going to very quickly remove the driver to stop smelling out the box and uh, we'll see how much smoke comes out. Okay, here we go. Moment of truth. There's a decent amount. Not a lot. But there's a fair bit of smoke in the air. The magnet on the back of this, however, is stupidly hot. Wow. That is actually extremely hot and I stand corrected this was not the subwoofer box with the stuff in it hopefully it doesn't smell for very long you can just see that smoke though slowly going up in the air nice this garage is going to smell for a while okay so learning from the mistakes we just made I am going to remove the JVC driver from the sub box okay so there we are with the JVC subwoofer removed and I stand corrected it was this subwoofer that has all the sound deadening inside of the enclosure. With that being said though, let's plug our wires into it, crank it up and try to somehow hold it into position without it moving a ton. And uh, of course, up it goes in smoke. All right, so I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of the setup we've got going here. We have our banana plugs put into the screw terminals. They're screwed up in there, so they are perfectly tight. There is no way that the wires will come disconnected. We also have the subwoofer itself clamped to the bench. It will not move one bit. It feels like it's mounted in a box. There should be no vibrations. Nothing should be able to disconnect other than this sub going up in smoke. And because it's not in a box, you'll get to see the whole thing. Let's blow up the JVC woofer. <laughs> Oh, sparks and smoke, nice. Again, these subwoofers actually have some power to them. So that was, in fact, the, oh, it's been a while since I've actually smelt coil properly. These are, in fact, taking the CV2800 at full power. And when I, oh, oh, the smell. When I say full power, I mean, the Behringer's cranked all the way up, my phone's cranked all the way up, the EQ's turned all the way up, and the amp's turned all the way up. It's peaking 100% clipping. It stinks like so bad in here. Wow. Damn. Okay, let's quickly bust this Sony out, get these subs outside, and vent this garage out before my car stinks like blown speaker. Oh my god, it's been a while. I just have to get you in closely. Take a look at the spider when I push on it. Look at all the smoke coming out every single time I press the coil down. I've never seen anything like that before. Man, that looks absolutely awesome. All right, so remembering courtesy of Riley, we now have the Sony Explode, which is my first time actually blowing up a subwoofer that isn't round. So very keen to be blowing this up. And uh, again, I've seen videos online of these subwoofers handling a lot of power. So it'd be very interesting to see how this goes down compared to the Cadence and the JVC. All of them are 300 watt rated four ohm car subwoofers. However, from videos I've seen online, this Sony Explode should put up the biggest challenge of the lot. So let's, uh, let's put that to the test uh, with the CV2800 and 3000 watts RMS. <laughs> So far, it's handling the power very well. It's bottoming out a fair bit. The CV28 is half volume right now. Whoa, look at that excursion.
Aww. Pretty anticlimactic finish, to be honest. I think the JVC put out the biggest show of the lot. Maybe, just maybe, I started a little too aggressive and went a little too hard on these. Uh, but it's excessively loud in the garage right now with these subs going. So we're going to do the usual. We're going to pull them apart in the same order that we put them together. Man, the Explode actually, it has a rather different smell. That actually just might be plastic burning. So it smells very different to the other two subwoofers. But like always, we're going to pull these subs apart in the same order that we blew them. And uh, we'll have a look at the voice coils, see the damage done. And uh, yeah, of course, like always, I should film myself pushing on the cone. Let's see if the voice coil is locked up and uh, hear what it sounds like. Oh, completely locked. <laughs> nice. Well, we have a Sony Explode that does not move. It also has a very, very different smell. It's actually almost not bad. That sounds really weird. It's bad. It doesn't smell good, but it doesn't smell terrible. Okay, so apparently my batteries and my camera like to go flat at halfway. So I'm gonna re-say everything I said in the last minute and then cut back in right where I was, what I was talking about. So if the cut's really bad, I apologize for that. But essentially, this is the first subwoofer I've pulled apart that is actually a dual layer voice, uh, sorry, dual um, spider um, subwoofer design. So you can see obviously here we have the yellow spider, which is our first one up the top here. And then this second layer around the uh, pole piece here is, our secondary spider. So we have a lot of voice coil trapped in here. Now I reckon these subwoofers from Sony are solid as they actually, from all the videos I've seen, they do rated power and you can see how much coil there is still left in there. These do rated power, the dual spider, very solid design, dual stacked magnet. I 100% for a budget build if I was someone at home building a subwoofer um, for home, obviously. I would 100% recommend these. Tons of voice coil, tons of it's still left in good condition. And we can see here's that plastic thing that I was talking about before. It looks very, very weird. I've never seen anything like this before, but this is probably what I could smell that I said didn't smell like traditional um, voice coil smell. I'd say it was this plastic here burning. It's uh, very weird. I wonder if I could pull the cone off. Yes, I can. So the cone is stuck to whatever this is. If I just rip on it really, oh, wrong way, sorry. Here is, I guess, the way it mounts to the back of the cone. And then here is the back of the cone. Really weird. Anyway, very, very solid subwoofers. I highly rate the explodes. I probably shouldn't have blown that up. But I uh, definitely had to commit to that one for you guys. If you want to see a build with one of these, if this video gets a ton of support, I will maybe consider going out and buying one of these brand new, which seems like an absolute waste of money considering I just had one that was perfectly working and uh, making a video with that. But with that being said though, here has been three 12 inch car subwoofers blown up for your entertainment. If you guys have enjoyed this video, Apologies for my noisy tripod. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more like it. With that being said though guys, chuck a like on the video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm going to move these out of the garage as fast as I can because it stinks in here now.